Summary of a Vindication of the Rights of Woman by Mary Wollstonecraft As a response to the pamphlet on national education that was written by the French politician Talleyrand Perigord, Mary Wollstonecraft wrote a vindication of the rights of woman. According to her, women will stop the progress of knowledge and ethics if they are not educated to become the companion of man. Wollstonecraft thinks that women's lack of schooling has led to a lot of suffering. Women are taught that love is the most important thing in life, and they are not told to improve their intelligence or character. In her attack on modern ideas about women's education, Wollstonecraft mostly talks about middle-class women and sees them as human creatures. Placed on this earth to unfold their faculties. Being human is based on reason, and virtue is what sets people apart from each other. She bases her case on the idea that knowledge leads to virtue. Wollstonecraft disagrees with the usual view that men and women should strive for different virtues. She thinks that men and women should aim for the same virtues, even though they have different responsibilities in life. But because women's schooling isn't always planned out, they don't have enough chances to develop their minds and become good. Most of the time, they are taught to please men, which only prepares them for a short time in life, courtship and early marriage. It's not even clear to them how to make couples last or how to properly care for their children. Since women are told that pleasure is the most important thing in life, they are never given the chance to deal with problems and learn from them. Women aren't taught to use logic, instead, they're let to be led by their feelings and sensitive natures, which doesn't prepare them to be good wives and moms. In addition, not getting enough schooling makes them very vulnerable if they lose their husbands or are seduced and ruined by a man leaving them with no way to pay their own expenses. Wollstonecraft criticizes several writers from the 18th century who wrote about women's schooling in particular. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who says that women only need to be taught if it makes them ready to serve men, gets the harshest criticism from her. She also doesn't care about Fordyce's preaching or Gregory's rules of behavior. She comes to the conclusion that women have taken on many of these unfair standards because they haven't been taught to tell the difference between what makes sense and what is based on bias. She also talks about how important early views are, how important it is for both men and women to be modest, and how reputation is different from virtue. Wollstonecraft believes that duty is an important part of building families and, eventually, society. For most women, Duty includes being a mother and taking care of the home. Society tells women they should only care about how they look on the outside, so they don't do the things that nature gave them to do, which makes them unhappy and breaks down family bonds. It is only fair that women are protected by civil rules that help them do their jobs. As well as law and business, they should be able to learn medicine and politics so that they can have more job opportunities and be more useful to society as a whole. At the end of a vindication, Wollstonecraft suggests that all children should be able to go to free public schools. Such schools, which would have strong jostlings of equality that are Republican, would focus on making good citizens by growing the good habits that people have at home. She supports co-education at all levels because she thinks it will help boys and girls get along better in a normal way. Girls going to these kinds of schools won't get them off of their housework, instead, it will sharpen their minds and make them better prepared to do their housework and care for their families based on virtue and reason instead of bias and wild emotions. Last but not least, Wollstonecraft calls for a revolution for women, saying again that men's biases keep them down and not because they are weak. This will be shown when women are free to grow in their love and understanding. As soon as women are freed from ignorance, they will have the freedom that rational beings with souls deserve and society will gain as a whole. About the author. Wollstonecraft was born in Spitalfields, London, on April 27, 1759. She read the Bible, ancient philosophers, Shakespeare, and Milton despite her poor background and schooling. Wollstonecraft, along with her sisters Eliza and Everina, ran a girls' school near London for a short time. It was there that she came up with many of the ideas she wrote about in her first book, Thoughts on the Education of Daughters, 1786. She worked as a governess for a short time and didn't like it. Then she became a reviewer and translator for the critical journal Analytical Review, which was unusual for a woman at the time. 
It was through this job that she met intellectuals like Thomas Paine, William Godwin, and William Blake. She wrote A Vindication of the Rights of Men in 1790 as part of the pamphlet war that began with Edmund Burke's reflections on the revolution in France. In 1792, she wrote A Vindication of the Rights of Woman in just six weeks. It was kind of a follow-up. She had a relationship with an American businessman named Gilbert Imlay while she was living alone in Paris during the French Revolution. This led to the birth of her first daughter, Fanny. Imlay cheated on Wollstonecraft, and after she moved back to England, she tried to kill herself twice. In March 1797, she married William Godwin. Unfortunately, she died 11 days after her daughter's birth at 38. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.